Welcome to SalinaRadio.com. I'm your host, Ron Lyons, and this is the voice of Salina, Texas. Guys, welcome to another episode of SalinaRadio.com. That's right, this is not your grandfather's boring podcast. Actually, your grandfather didn't have a podcast, but your friends do, and it's boring because it's not this podcast. But we're not going to talk about that right now. What we're going to talk about is what you just heard, which was the amazing voice of Holly Fisher. She is the guest on the show today, and she happens to be a person with many varied interests, including she's an architect, she's a huge fan of Salina, Texas, and she's a barbershop singer. Now, that's not something you run across every day, but we happen to get her on the show because she really loves preserving historic Homes, And as you know, I'm very much into preserving historic homes. We have quite a few right here in Salina, Texas. We're doing some restaurants. We're doing some amazing other things with these buildings. And so when I found out that Holly Fisher is a preservationist, that's somebody who loves to save these old homes, I was like, she's got to be on the show. The barbershop singing part? Well, that was just bonus. We're going to talk about a lot of cool things today, and I hope that you've been on my page on Facebook. It's called The Best of Salina, and if you like this kind of stuff, if you like learning about your friends and your neighbors and how amazing Salina is, go check out The Best of Salina on Facebook. It's absolutely incredible. But guys, for right now, sit back, relax. And let's enjoy a nice little conversation with Holly Fisher. Guys, I'm here right now with somebody that is very, very interested in Salina. And when I say interested, I mean she's got a passion for things that some of us just kind of take for granted. And, and what that is, is the historic homes in Salina, Texas. And her name is Holly Fisher. Holly, how are you doing today? I'm great. Very good. And the reason that you're so interested in these older homes, you kind of have a passion for that and stuff, is because your job actually has to do with that. So tell me, what what is it that you do? So I am an architect. I own my own firm. And just to get right into it, at the age of 10, I was in San Antonio and I was in um, the, his, the King William District and I fell in love with the historic homes down there. And so I went to school and got a certificate in historic preservation and alongside with my architecture degree. So, so you knew at an early age that, hey, I've got a passion for this. Something just spoke to you. You said, I like this. I do. I love, I love that you can see the history of a space, that sometimes there's ghost lines left over where you can see that there used to be a door here, there used to be a stair here, or this used to be the outside and it's been brought inside. So it, it's almost like you can see how the building grew as the people who lived in it needed it to change with their lives and their lifestyles. I love that. So so you and I have talked a little bit before the the, the show today and you we're, we're literally sitting right now in a very old home it's got a lot of history we're sitting in a room that was actually only added I think like maybe in the 80s or 90s so we would have been out on a porch at some point in this home's history but I absolutely love all of the old homes and have invested pretty substantially in a lot of old homes I'm super excited to have you on the show today to talk about all of this stuff. And I know so many people in Salina love our history. We love the things like these old homes and the life that has gone on in all of these homes. And and that speaks to you and it speaks to me. So I think it's so cool. So you just said ghost lines, and Mm -hmm. that's a term I've never heard before, but I, I see that quite often. So maybe the floor might have wood floors and you can tell there used to be like a wall here, you know? 
and things like that. So, and, and, and there's just so much life that has happened in these homes. So what, what's kind of your sweet spot age wise? Like, okay, do you like the 50 year old homes? Do you like the mm. hundred? Like what's the sweet spot for Holly? That is like making me pick a favorite child. <laughs> 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 okay, but so so tell me where the cutoff is then. So you like all the old stuff, but like, can you dig the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, or is there somewhere back before that that, yeah, I kind of like it up to about this era? So because I, I know that, okay, let's, let me start with this. There is a, a, an accepted understanding that at 50 years, Things start becoming cool again for some weird reason. For some <laughs> right. weird reason. So I'm 55 years old. You are cool I'm, again. I'm cool again. Yes. I am cool again. Okay, yes. I like that. So if nothing else today, <laughs> I'm going to leave here knowing I'm cool again. So yes. no, I'm sorry. So so, no, so okay. at 50 years, things kind of come back into to fashion, so to speak. Architecturally, you're speaking. Right. Style style wise, style wise for sure. And so you know, everyone right now is. Well, I say everyone. But a lot of people are into the mid-century modern or right. mid-century mod. Everybody's talking about that. And how old are those homes and those interiors? They're, they are from the 60s and 70s, which is 50 years old. And 15, 20 years ago, everyone thought they were obnoxious and ugly and <laughs> wood paneling and weird ceilings. Let's not do any of this. But all of a sudden, we like it again. So the same thing is about to happen to the 80s. We just don't know it, but it's gotcha. coming. So, so, so I'm not going to turn my nose up at the 80s. We're getting a little insider tip right now. So if you're listening and you're anticipating redoing a property or something like that, reach for the 80s. Mm-hmm. Reach for the 80s. You heard it here first, folks. So that's that's kind of what's going on. So talk to me a little bit. So in, in this particular house, and I know you haven't looked at it much, um, for those who are listening, almost everybody who knows this house is kind of like the famous blue house off the square. So we're just off the square, the blue house with the yellow door. What what do you see? What speaks to you about this house? Like what, what when a historical uh, or a history loving architect looks in here? What, what do you see? What do you think? Well, I am terrible at statistics. So if you ask me if, when something was built, I'm going to throw a number at it and I might be off by 20 years. But there was a time period when there were a lot of these homes being built that were mostly square in nature. And they usually had four, they were, they were uh, kind of broken up into four rooms on the right. inside. Right. And they had a, um, a sloping roof on all four sides, okay. which made a pyramid for the roof. And that name has become known as Southern Pyramidal. Oh, wow. And okay. so you can now, now that you know the square house, and like this one, it's been added on to, but the square house with a roof sloping on all four sides, you're gonna, you, you will see them all over Salina. They're all over Salina, which is probably about the time when the, when the, the city was either getting established or doing well. Right. People had a lot of money. They came in and they built these homes. Gotcha. Um, they might have been kit homes, but not necessarily, but it was the style. And so um, this house is, I love it. And I love the the tapered columns on the front porch. Right. Um, that's right. another little detail that people were adding that they wanted to be different from the turned columns that were also on Southern Pyramidal Houses. Um, but it's... It's, you're going to see them all over and you're going to recognize them. And sometimes they were two stories also. And they would they call them four squares or southern pyramidals when you're down here because we're in the south. Right, right. Very, very cool. So I, in this particular house, our, our, our goal is always to preserve the architecture, the history, the and, and respect the past and, you know, do all those things. We don't want to, we don't want to have to do anything that's going to be destructive to the home, if at all possible. Now, our goal for this particular house is to do a restaurant here. And it it serves, that's that's probably the best use for it currently being, you know, needing more places to eat, to entertain, to, to do things like that. This in proximity to the square, it's great. It's got really excellent outdoors and that sort of thing. But what I like to do is I like to tie things to literal history. So being that we're kind of doing a certain type of restaurant, Prohibition era, 1920s kind of deal, I have wanted for a long time to find something to connect this home to that time period. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I, I do metal detecting. I'm, I'm a little bit of a nerd like that. I like to get out in the woods on my own and lose myself literally and find old things buried in the ground, old coins, whatever. And in this particular case, 
I wanted to tie it back to the 20s, so I'm metal detecting the backyard here, and I find a key fob. Uh, not a fob, a, a tag from a hotel in Galveston, Texas, that only existed between 1920 and I believe in 1929. It burned down, okay? So in during one the of 20s. The many fires on the strand. Correct. Right? And from room number 13. Mm-hmm. So that's probably why someone kept it, mm-hmm. because how unique is that? It's metal. Has the name of the hotel stamped on it, um, so so by default, that's nearly a hundred years old or over, a little over a hundred years old. We don't know the exact year, but between twenty and twenty nine. And when I did my research, that hotel was kind of at the epicenter, the hub of a lot of prohibition era stuff going on, as you know, Galveston was kind of known for. And uh, and I just thought, okay, this is meant to be. Mm-hmm. I found that in this yard. It's from that hotel during Prohibition 100 years ago, and now that's kind of what we're moving forward with. So if, if you were going to do something, I know you design a lot of things, would, would taking on a project like this, like doing designing for like a restaurant, but trying to, you know, preserve the integrity and the history and the architecture, is that something that you would do? Oh my goodness, that, that would be my... Absolutely. I, I'm not sure how else to say it other than... <laughs> I can see it on it, your face It would right be now. perfect. Well, it, and so I want to tell you a little bit about my business, that um, my business partner, she and I formed the business together. Her name is Clara Carlisle, and we were college roommates. And so I have known her for um, a long time, yeah. very long time, I won't say how long. <laughs> uh, and she went um, down a path where she was doing commercial architecture and I went down the historic preservation uh, path which led me to res- to residential as well right and so but now we've been in business together for 17 years and she mostly does her own projects by herself we have we have an intern that works with us as well but she's working on her own projects by herself they're all commercial they're mostly new sometimes in historic buildings we have a few down on the square in McKinney and then I'm only doing residential, and I don't get to touch historic pre- preservation very much because, in my experience as an architect, most of the money in historic preservation is in the government buildings. And there's only a few architecture firms out there that are handling the government contracts. Gotcha. And so being able to work on an historic, an historic building, a home especially, and combining it with Clara's knowledge of restaurants, all things restaurants... I mean, we would we would go to town on this <laughs> and have yeah. You know. and, and and what's so cool about that is let's just say that you know if you took on a project similar to this and you did that, it, it has life. Like you know, so you, you're you're doing things to preserve the history, right? That's mm-hmm. the, that's just a given. And because a lot of people would want to come in and knock this down, uh. that's just a fact. I mean, a lot of people. They're just kind of forward-minded. They don't really look backwards too much, and they don't appreciate maybe... Saving stuff is expensive. You have to want to do it. Very much so. Very much so. To bring a 100-year-old home up to the the codes and the standards that are required today and and become ADA compliant, everything else that you have to do certainly requires a budget. And so... You know, knocking it down, that, that would just never happen for us. That's 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 a that's a just forget it from the minute you think of it. It's that's not gonna happen. But it's it's looking forward and trying to design something now that's actually gonna be utilized for the future. So you're kind of in that that you're you're at that that middle point, you're at that fulcrum of this really significant past and then what's potential, what's possible in the future. What a great spot for you to be in. That's got to be amazing. It's it's and it's incredibly fun. It's very rewarding, I would imagine, when you actually see your work. And it's right there in front of you. It's tangible. You can walk up. You can walk into it. You can look at it. You can say, wow, look at this. Well, I just think they did so many things right. Obviously, it would not be standing if they hadn't done anything right. They had this understanding of the golden ratio. They had, you know, the proportion of the windows were correct to the the area of the facade. The, right. the roof pitches were the right pitch. Nobody was trying to copy something and make it new, but make it bigger because everybody wants 10-foot ceilings now and everybody wants <laughs> argon-filled windows. <laughs> right. And so, it, you know, they were just creating something beautiful and they and they did that. And then it stood the test of time. And then I get to come in 
we get to come in and maybe we restore it. And this is exactly what you're saying. We can restore it to a particular time period because things changed over time. When it was built, it was one color and it was this shape and it was used in this way. And then 20 years later, a different family moved in or they had children or whatever. And and the building grew and changed. Right. And so now it's growing and changing again, but we want to take it back to something that it was once. We want to uh, respect it and honor it, but we want to give it new life with a new function. And so I just, it's, to me, it's, it's almost like designing a home or designing a restaurant. Anybody can do that, but being able to take something that's already there and honor it and do something new in it, that's where the challenge is. And then challenges are fun. You're literally speaking my language. And so that's exactly what we're trying to accomplish, not, not only in this house, but in others around Salina. And we, we focus mostly on Salina. So that's why it was so important for me to get you on this show because you're literally speaking my language. So we love this stuff and we could probably sit here for 10 hours. We, we actually, in my pre-show prep, let's say that 10 times fast, pre-show, pre-show prep. prep, yes. Typically about 10 or 15 minutes. You and I spent an hour because we were just talking about all this stuff. I know, so. and I wasn't done. So. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I could keep going. <laughs> so, so yeah, that, I think that's amazing. And so, but we want to learn a little bit about you. You've been in Salina now for what, 10 years or so? Mm-hmm. And you've got some, you've got a property here and um, you've got, uh, I just have to ask, how old is your house? Well, <laughs> I actually, 1980. <laughs> no, I, well, I live, I live in, I live in a brand new house, but, but the acreage, the house, I don't know how old it is, um, but not that old. It's, <laughs> so you're not, you're it not might have living been built. in the historic thing because there's no, well, there was not an option for that. I would, I know I, it's, it's a, it's a <laughs> pull on me and I want to live in a historic house, but then I, I have this great desire to design my own house and right right i keep getting really close and then something <laughs> happens and i don't get to do it i fully fully understand yeah. i don't happen to live in a historic home either yeah so i want two homes can i have two you can actually okay. you can do that or you can vicariously live by helping people like right. me accomplish our mission and um, probably make some very good money in the process so tell me so tell me about salina so Roughly 10 years ago, you come to Salina. What in the heck made you choose Salina? Out of all the places in the world you could live, why Salina? So we have to go back to a little town yeah. in Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay. My parents, uh, I grew up in Ohio. Um, and I actually grew up north of Cincinnati. Right. In, um, and we were out in the middle of nowhere. We were, we, you know, we were in a great school district and we were close to shopping. But for some reason, the home that my parents chose, I think we had an acre, acre and a half. We were in a neighborhood of acreage type, you know, acre and a half um, type lots. And so I, I was spoiled and I grew up in a home that had a lot of land on it and was out in the middle of nowhere. And I had to drive a long way to get to school and ride on the bus, but it didn't matter to me. I just love like the open and the, you know, I, I love the trees of Ohio. I love the prairies of Texas. I love the hills, you know, it's all just, I just love landscape and scenery. And so when um, we were, we we're living in Little Elm and we started looking at property with my parents. We right. wanted to move somewhere with my parents. We lived on the same street right. and we looked at various places um, just north of 380. And there was something about Salina that I was, I was drawn to. It was, um, it's magic. It is, and I, I think there was. I think it's these valleys and these hills where you can you can sit at the high school and look across that valley to the Absolutely. sunset. Absolutely, isn't it amazing? And vice versa. Yes, and I, I, I also you're you're gonna learn all this nerd stuff about me. I like to fly a drone. Oh. And that particular place where you just said you're at the high school and you look out across where the, the land just drops down right there, absolutely gorgeous. So it was it was things like that that drew you here. You're here now. How much do you love this community? I, I, I love it. I mean, I can't say anything other than everybody here feels like a friend before I've met them. Nice. Um, I you know, to get very candid, I, I, we moved here because we felt that everyone would share our values and we liked, that. we liked the, we liked what Salina schools had to offer. Um, but we liked that they were small and then just kind of asking around, everyone would say that, 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 you know, this, the values in the school 
were, were really good. So we knew we were going to send our children somewhere that we could we could trust. Right. Um, and that's that's really what what did it was knowing that I was going to be somewhere that my my kids were were going to where, whether they were with me or they were with strangers basically that they were they were going to be raised with my values and my morals and that's that's what I think about Salina is that there's there's a lot of people here new and old who came here for the values. Guys, I hope you're enjoying this episode of SalinaRadio.com. As a matter of fact, if you enjoy half as much as I enjoy creating it for you, then I'm going to call that a win. And you know what? Holly Fisher's awesome. She is just someone who has a passion for Salina. She loves architecture. She loves doing the preservation of the historic homes. And it just so happens that she's a great singer on top of that. And with that intro that you heard at the beginning of the episode, that was me having her sing with herself. She had to sing one part, and then I recorded her singing the second part, and then we layered them together and created a video that you're going to love watching. Now, it's not done in an acoustically good environment. It was done in an empty room in a house. Recorded with a cell phone, and she had no idea that it was coming. She walked into that interview and had no clue that I was going to ask her to do that. So she was a great sport and did it, and it turned out beautifully. She's got an amazing voice, and I was very, very, very happy that she was willing to do that. So you've heard that on the intro. Go find the video. It's on my page on the Best of Salina, and it's pretty short. But it's really awesome. I think you're going to like it. And speaking of the Best of Salina, if you are not on the Best of Salina group on Facebook, join. It's incredible. We're growing at the rate of about 100 people per day. And it is literally the Best of Salina. The best personalities, people with small businesses, people sharing things about their kids' accomplishments, selling different things. I mean, there's just... Literally, you can come on there and hang out and discover the best of Salina. So go check it out, guys. It's super awesome. And there's so many benefits that come along with it. Like we have a great networking group. We've got some other fun things coming up. And it's all free. It's it's a labor of my love for this city and for you. So go check it out. For right now, guys, we're going to get back to this interview. It's almost over. But I think there's something funny at the very, very end. You might want to listen past the last little bit of this and see what happens at the very end of this. And no, it didn't have anything to do with her singing. So one of the things that people really like to know about all the guests on this show is like what you like to do, where you like to eat and stuff like that. So I, I asked you earlier where you like to eat and it was a very interesting and different answer because it's not one I've heard before. Um, or if I have maybe just once, it's not, it's not common, although it should be. And, and, and where is it that Holly likes to eat in Salina, Texas? I like to eat at the gas station. <laughs> Okay, but that's... Salina <laughs> Asian Bistro is my favorite. That's awesome. So it's not like you're going into 7-Eleven and no. getting some, like, you know, six-hour-old fried burritos or something. You're going next no. door to the Asian Bistro, and what do you like to get there? I love... We eat a variety of things there. They're the sweetest, kindest people. Um, Aren't they? They're so nice. And they're... they. It's just the three of them working so hard, and I, I want to go back there and help them, even though I'd probably <laughs> make more mess. <laughs> But my favorite is the uh, summer roll, right. which is a riceless sushi roll. Wow! Okay. And then, I mean, everything we get there though we get we get the general sows, we get the chicken fried rice, we get the the tuna tower, uh, and I. It's the best. It's amazing. Really good. Really fresh sushi. Really well prepared. And it's it's one of those. It's kind of like a little. Um, well, for a long time, it was kind of like a secret. Like not everybody knew about mm-hmm. it. Like there it is. But do you really go in next to 7-Eleven and get that kind of food? Maybe not. Well, guess what? Now you do. Have you seen at their busiest times, they literally have a multi-hour wait? Yes. 
It's and you, nuts. you have, we have, we know about it and we have, we prepare for it. We order, we know when we have to order to beat the rush so that we can have it. Even if we have to sit on it, we That's, absolutely know it. So you're calling it midnight. I'm going to need dinner for tonight. Tomorrow. Yes. And I'm going to, it's going to, yes, yes. 12 hours from now, I'm going to need, yeah, I understand. But that, you know what that does? That just screams of the popularity, yeah. right? And, and a lot of hard work and building up base of people who love what you do being very consistent in your quality and putting together something that's amazing not not very much unlike most businesses right that's what you're supposed to do so you've got you've got a place here in salon you've been here for 10 years you you like the asian bistro is your place to to eat and there's something else that's very interesting and unique about you that some people know but i bet not everybody knows and that is that you actually sing as a barber shop. Now you're gonna have to help me with the terminology here. I'm gonna I'm gonna tear it up, but a barber shop like quartet type deal. What mm-hmm. what is that exactly? Well we call ourselves barber shoppers. Okay. So, so you're you can a call me shopper. a barber shopper. Okay. And um it, the verb is I quartet. You quartet. Yeah I quartet. I I compete. <laughs> Do you have a t shirt that says I quartet? <laughs> no, I but but I know someone who can make me t shirts. <laughs> And will in about five minutes. Right. So um, I I have sung in several quartets. Um, I I started out. I should back up with the with the origin story. <laughs> okay. My uh, my mother my sister graduated from high school and moved away, and then my mother decided she needed a hobby. Right. So she answered. This is in 1987. She answered an ad for free vocal lessons. In Cincinnati. Wow. And when she got there, it was a women's barbershop chorus. Oh, wow. And she says that she fell in love the minute she heard sounds coming out of their mouth. Because it really is. The barbershop art form is amazing. There's, you know, there's there's a craft to it. There's things that we can do with our voices and four voices together that you wouldn't, you would, you would have, you know, the, the goosebumps on your arm right. is just the beginning. Oh, I can imagine. And so she joined the chorus, and at the time, it didn't occur to me that I could join. I just went to I went to rehearsals. I stood on the risers. I learned parts. I became friends with these people who were nowhere near my age. Most of the women that were in these in the choruses were 30, 40s, and up. And um, it's a competitive organization. And so each each year choruses and quartets they go to a regional competition and then if they win their region they get to go to the international competition which is usually held in the U.S. but we do have 31 regions around the world and we have very competitive choruses that are not U.S. based. Wow. And so um, my mother's chorus won their region several times and she went to international competition in Salt Lake City, New Orleans, Fort Lauderdale, uh, all over. That's where she went, and I would right. follow her to those contests. Well, then I went to college, and I did some singing in college, but didn't really even think about it. There wasn't a chorus um, in College Station. And when I graduated, I moved to Dallas. And the weekend, we are moving me into my new apartment, and my mom's frantically looking for a phone book. And she finds it, and she's, she gets off the phone, and she says, um, you're going to rehearsal on Tuesday. Okay. Like, oh. <laughs> Oh, that's right. You know, this, this thing, I had kind of forgotten about it. And she said, well, the, you know, the premier chorus in the organization is located right here in Dallas and you have to go, you have to go join. You have to go see, you know, go see them. And I said, okay, sure. Whatever. That's fine. So a couple of days later we went to rehearsal and it was just, it was like having all the air pulled out and, and you, your, your face is in a wind tunnel and, and it's the most beautiful thing you've ever heard. And I, you know, they're like, well, if you might be interested in joining us, you can take an audition packet and a few weeks you can, and I was like, give it to me now. I want it. And can I audition tonight? <laughs> no, no, you can't. So, um, I joined in 2001 nice. and I went to international competition with that chorus. Oh goodness. I think five times. Wow. And in that time we won twice. They actually are the current, um, international champions. They won, uh, last October. And, um, and then about 16, no, I'm sorry, 14 years ago, 14 years ago when my daughter was, my daughter was about six weeks old and, um, I decided it was a good time to start quartetting. And so I, I formed a quartet with some other, um, young ladies in my chorus and we went to competition and we came in dead last. (laughs) 
<laughs> at regional. That is my claim to fame. Dead last. And and actually, that was the only thing we wanted to achieve. Right, we, right. They, everyone would ask us, because you get, you get coached. There's this whole world of people. You get coached as a group, and these coaches are encouraging you and trying to make you better and teaching you things. And they, what's your goal? And we're like, we just, we just don't want to come in last. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and we came in last. And you came in last. Yeah. So it took me a couple of years. I joined another quartet. That one came in seventh. I you know, joined another quartet, got as high as third. And this is just at the regional level. Right. And then um, about six years ago, um, I started quartetting with one of my best friends. And and um, she had won previously. She's She's been in the organization for years. And we, we joined up with um, I Sing Baritone, which is the middle harmony. Mm-hmm. And she sings lead. And then we have um, a tenor who sings up high, that's like soprano. And then we have the bass who sings low, almost like the men's tenor. Right. Or, um, no, 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 I'm sorry. Well, I guess, yes, well. in your world, the men's tenor <laughs> right. and baritone. And they, they sing very low. So uh, we, we went to competition and we won. Nice. We won the regional competition, which right. sent us to international. And most quartets, um, you, there are 50, 50 quartets. Who, who compete each international, and most quartets would be happy to be in the top 25. You're in the top half. Fantastic. And we came in sixth. That's amazing. It was, it was, it was just, it was something I never, ever dreamed would happen. I, my, um, going to competitions with my mom, you'd see the women who had won in previous years, and you, you knew who they were, because when you win, you get a crown. <laughs> A so literal these, crown. Yes. And these women are walking around and you're just awestruck because they won. They they worked so hard and however many hours and years and they get, you know, they win. And once you once you win, you get a crown. You can wear it wherever you want if you want to. And you can win multiple times. And so I remember thinking, I'd love to win a crown someday. someday. And then, you know, when I came in last at regional, I was like, well, I'll be happy with winning regional. <laughs> <laughs> right. So then we went, you know, we run regional, we go, we get in sixth place and I mean, we're in the top 10. It's just, it's an amazing place to be. And I love, you know, so we went back several years and just, just from time and, and COVID was very hard on our organization. I can imagine. Very hard on our organization. We're international and we've got people who can't even, you know, they can't come back into the country right. for competitions um, or they could, but it, it's very difficult. Um, and so um, we eventually made it to second place. Wow. And when um, the first time, the first time we made, we won second place, we lost by two points. Wow. Out of 3,000. Amazing. And so um, I was like, oh, yeah, that's, you know, I'm just happy. It's, you know, I'm just happy to, I was incredibly happy to have the second place. But um, so unfortunately, we just decided it, it was time to be done. You know, we'd been together for a while, time to move on and try other things. You know, after you've come in twice second, you're like, maybe this isn't working. <laughs> I right. mean, you know, there's people who would die to be second place, myself included. I'm there now, so I don't have to die. But um, yeah, it was. It's it's been it's been the secret part of my life that it's given me amazing friendships. Right. It's taught me. I mean, my voice has improved. You know, in in, in ways I never thought possible. I, I didn't even like my voice. I I still kind of don't. And um, and then you know, it gives you this confidence. And I've, I've taken the, the confidence that I've gotten from the singing and being on stage. And it's not just singing because you're also performing. If, if you go and um, you can search for Sweet Adeline's International on YouTube and find thousands and thousands of videos. But if you'd like to find my quartet, we were called Titanium. Titanium. And, that, and somebody could actually find that on YouTube. Absolutely. Right. It's super easy. We have, I don't know, a, f- a few videos out there. Our most popular video is our 2019 finals very nice uh, video and that has about 35,000 views wow that's yeah. awesome and so uh, there's you know there's there's entertainment that goes on you're not just singing so um, it's it's taught me a lot of things um, and it's made me more confident even in my my business relationships too that I you know sometimes you know have some people say well you go into a room and you imagine that everybody's in their underwear and it makes you less nervous <laughs> I actually imagine that everyone in there is a barber shopper Oh, wow. And that we all have something in common. And they that's how much love and unity and um, everybody wants everybody else to succeed. You are competing against each other, but you care about everybody in there getting better. And, and you all have this commonality 
that you don't have with anyone else. In How the amazing world. is that? That's super cool. So yeah, that's my thing. So so I have to ask. So it's it's the barbershop concept and stuff, and we all know kind of where that came from, and it and it and it just makes certain. Uh, visions in my mind of like these men standing in a old timey barber shop with the, the the barber pole outside spinning, and they've got their little straw hats on and their little vests and that sort of thing. Have you actually ever sang in a barber shop? No, and I tried to get my quartet to go. I would say there's this barber shop <laughs> that's opening on Preston Road, and we should go down there and just be like, we're going to sing for you. And for some reason, we could never. I always thought that would be the coolest I think thing. The most amazing do. thing ever. And if yeah. I had a barber shop, I would love that. I mean, that would just be amazing to have you guys come in. And I, I guess you know it was uh, the the actual barbers that did it back in time, and um, now it's a thing. It's a and it's it's like a big thing. And <laughs> I had no idea it's a big thing. There's it's a secret a, cult. Anything that you can get into and earn a crown <laughs> is a big deal. That's a big deal. And I'm certain that COVID was really, really rough on it. But now that we're kind of moving past all that, um, so are you actively singing today, or what's your what's your status right now? I actually am. So I'm with, I'm currently without quartet, and um, and I would love to sing in a quartet again. I just haven't. It's a, it's like a marriage relationship, and you especially with the women's, um, you really have to you know find somebody that you click with on a personal level as well. Right. But I have, um, so you have, you make friends all over the world and we have some very good friends. And I say we, this is myself and my lead. Her name is Melody, by the way. Okay. Um, she and I decided that there's a chorus in San Antonio that's going to international this year and they have a joy about them and they have a fantastic director. And so we joined that chorus so that we could go to international with them. Wow. Um, and I drive to San Antonio every two weeks to go to rehearsal. And I, so I'm, I'm singing with them. And, it's, and then I also, um, in addition to the Sweet Anna Lines, which I've been a member of for 20 plus years, um, we've, we've started a new organization that right now is just about um, getting together and singing. There's not, um, Sweet Anna Lines has got a, is chapters and competition and it's, I mean, it's been around for 90 years or no, I guess 80 years. Um, and so it's got a lot of structure to it. But um, myself and Melody and two, two ladies from Tennessee, we got together and decided we wanted to have um, a, an annual retreat, which might turn into something later, but just a place to sing whatever we want to sing and um, retreat together once or twice a year, get together. And that organization is called True Harmony. Oh, nice. T-R-U okay. Harmony. Okay. Um, we're on Facebook, True Harmony Acapella. Dot com. So if no, somebody not dot com, not dot com. If it's on Facebook, on Facebook, but they can go in and do the T R U, the mm -hmm. true, mm -hmm. and then find you like that on yeah. Facebook. So so there is an, an actual Facebook page then for that. Yes. So we don't have membership, but we do. Uh, we basically just keep in touch with everybody who's interested. So if you are a female and you would like to sing a cappella and you want to you want to get into this art form, then you you know follow us and we'll keep you know keep your rest of all of the retreats that we're having and um and maybe you know maybe things change and we have a membership and you get to that would just mean basically that you get access to all of our body of music that right. we're we're, right. we're purchasing because you have to pay for music you know how that sure is. sure um so that's um that's what true harmony is right now and it's it's um it's just basically singing for singing acapella for fun it sounds awesome it sounds super cool so i, I want to go back real quick because um something that i think you you just mentioned that you can find your your singing thing on facebook if somebody is interested in your architectural stuff mm -hmm. how are they going to find you we have instagram we have facebook we have our website so our website is just 708 studios dot com okay the number 708 studios with an s Dot com. That's our website. Gotcha. And you can also find us on Facebook. That's uh, we have a lot of projects. We don't. We post our polished, finished, professional photos on our website. Facebook has here's this project under construction. Here's this project we're just getting started on. Um, sort of photos in there. So that one is just Seven Eight Studios um, on the Facebook. Okay. Very very cool. There. So if people yeah. want to find you there, so they know how to find your singing, they know how to find your architectural stuff mm -hmm. but you know on this show we don't just cover stuff like where you like to eat and what you do and who you are and why you're in Salina we like to do something kind of fun sometimes too uh -oh. and so today and, and you don't know this well 
you might know this person. I actually think you do know this person. I've got somebody coming in hmm. to sing with you today. Okay. So would you be up to the challenge of doing a little unrehearsed, un, you know, uh, kind of unexpected singing with someone today? You're you're asking you're asking a barbershopper if I can sing <laughs> unrehearsed. The answer is yes. <laughs> So, are you curious who the person is? I would love to know. It's actually Holly Fisher. It's Did you. you. Clone me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're going to clone you today. You're going to get to sing with yourself okay. through a little bit of video magic. I'm going to give you the opportunity today to. You can choose whatever you want, and 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 obviously, we're not in an acoustically. You know, uh, it's not even that great for a podcast in here. And uh, we we had to pause a minute ago because there was some construction going on across the street. And we had to stop for a moment. So it's it's not the most acoustically perfect place. And So you're saying I'm not going to get auto-tune. You're not going to get auto-tune, right? No auto-tune. And it's probably going to be a little rough because I'm doing the video editing Mm -hmm. and all that stuff. We don't have have high-end stuff here. But it's for fun. And it's for Solina in Texas. And if you're up to the task, I know that people are going to absolutely love that. So if you are listening to this podcast right now, you're going to want to definitely go find that video and watch it. It's going to be on the YouTube channel and we're going to post it on the best of Selena page. And (laughs) yeah, she, right now she's realizing thousands of people (laughs) are about to see her do her thing. So that's, uh, if you're, if you're going to do that and, and, and so if you're just listening, you're not watching the video then we're going to take a quick pause right here and it won't sound like very long to you listening. It's just going to sound like a few seconds and we're going to be right back and we're going to talk about how that went. And right now we have no idea because this is completely unexpected on her part. When she walked into this house today to do this podcast, she had no idea what she was in store for. So tell me right now, how are you feeling right now, Holly? <laughs> she looks, is that an answer? She looks a little nervous. So it's going to be good though. It's going to be good. So we're going to, Yep, just nice and relaxed. It's gonna be good. So we're gonna hit we're gonna hit the pause button for one second. If you're listening on audio, we'll be right back within just a couple of seconds. Um, and if you are gonna see the video, then by all means comment on it and tell us what you think about it. It's gonna be amazing. Holly is awesome. It's gonna be a fantastic thing, and I can't wait to see it. All right, guys, you may be wondering. First of all, why am I taking a break right here? The reason I'm taking a break right here is because this is the portion of the podcast where I actually recorded Holly Fisher doing a duet with herself. So while that's actually being recorded in real time on the podcast, I decided to take this break in this moment and put this music here because I want to talk to you very briefly about the Salina real estate market right now. And if you can tell, this is, this is some goofy music and it's a goofy market right now. It is absolutely nuts out there. There are houses that are sitting there and camping forever and not selling and other homes are going on the market and selling reasonably quickly. It's literally exactly like this music. It's nuts. If you want to get into that game, it is a fantastic time to buy. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you it's a great time to sell because unless you price your home appropriately and market it very, very well, it's not a good time to sell. But there are some people out there who are getting fairly desperate to sell their properties, and it's a great time to get out there and take advantage of that So if you're in that position where you would like to go out there and scoop up an investment property, maybe grab that piece of land you've been wanting for a long time, let me just tell you, now is the time. So give me a phone call, 214-783-5440 or ron at ronlyons.com. And let's get out there and try to make this little circus thing work in your favor. I assure you, it can be done. It's just not everybody can do it. So give me a call. Okay, so we're back, guys. We just 
did the recording, and I have to ask you, that was maybe your first time singing with this Holly Fisher oh, person, so yeah. give, give me your idea. What do you think? How was she? Well, I, I was I was impressed with her work ethic. I was impressed, you know, she came and she knew her stuff. <laughs> right. Um, and no one died. No one died, so that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Everybody's still here. Seriously, that was awesome. Was How much lot of, fun was that? Well, you gave me the bug. You gave me the bug again. And I, you know, I'm like, <laughs> I, I love singing anyway as it is. And I love, you know, having other voices involved. And acapella is just such its own creature. And I just, I'm like, oh my goodness, I need to. So interestingly, I'm going to a barbershop competition tomorrow night. And so oh, wow. I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to get my fill tomorrow night, but man, I need to sing with somebody bad. That's awesome. Bad. Super, super yeah. good. So I enjoyed that. I don't know a whole lot about that, but I know the sounds coming out of your body are awesome <laughs> and very impressive. I only wish that I could do something like that. I'm, I'm doing good to talk here. So oh, that was uh, that was amazing. Thank you for doing that. It's going to be a lot of fun. People are going to enjoy watching that. And this whole interview has been great. Somebody who has you know a love and a passion for Salina, somebody who happens to do the kind of architecture and that sort of work that's right up my alley right now since we're involved in trying to save as many homes as we are in Solana. Yes. And then on top of that, a barbershop singer. I mean so <laughs> now you didn't you didn't just that wasn't you didn't quartet in there. You just is that a duet? That was that, a duet. I mean, so, I can't sing. I wish I could sing all four parts, but that would have, we would have been here for three days. So I, I managed to sing the melody and then my part, the harmony that and, goes with it. And, and I have no idea what you're talking about, but it was awesome. It was really good. So Holly, thank you so Thanks very much. Thanks for letting much. me do it. That was so much fun. It was fantastic. And guys, that is Holly Fisher. All right, guys, what did you think about Holly Fisher? Super cool, right? Everything that I said, big time fan of Salina, Texas, loves her job, preserving historic homes, doing architecture, and that's right, singing in a barbershop quartet. Uh, that's a very unique person right there. I was very grateful to have her on the show. Very grateful that she agreed to do it. Very grateful that she agreed to sing with herself too because that was something awesome and different. So guys, that's that's going to wrap it up for today. Well, like I told you before, I've got something kind of special at the end of this. And that special thing is that I guess a while back I was doing these kind of unique songs that I had found. And somebody said, hey, what happened to the unique songs that you were putting on the end of your podcast? Would you do that again? So I did. I found something really cool. It's only a minute and a half long. I, I really, really like my heritage being Scottish and Irish. And I just, I found some music that kind of goes along with that. So if you can appreciate that kind of history... You might like this little minute and a half song, so take a listen to this. It's uh, super cool, and uh, see if you like it. But anyways, guys, just I look forward to seeing you on the next show. And as I always say, stay safe. And of course, the most important thing, God bless.
Okay, now we're going to record one more little thing here. Uh-oh. This is something that... Yeah, but uh, you have an evil grin only, in your face. Yeah, only people... Only people who are listening to the very, very end of this podcast are going to hear this. So most people are going to miss it. Okay. But I'm going to ask you a serious, life-altering question. Okay. Okay. If you had to fight a horse-sized duck, a horse-sized single one duck, or a hundred duck-sized horses... Which do you fight? Which does Holly Fisher fight? Oh, ducks are mean. <laughs> I would pick the. I would pick a hundred duck-sized horses. <laughs> You've got all these little horses running around. And what's your technique? What, you you can like kick them, or what's the? Well, do, do I get any them? weapons? No, no weapons. No weapons. No. no. Well, goodness, this is so violent. <laughs> it's violent. Uh, it's not real. <laughs> I I have I have boots on and my feet and I yes. There's there lots of go. kicking because then that gives me freedom. You know, they, I kick them. They go a long way. It gives me time to do some other things. But I, well, if I had the choice to run and I can outrun a duck-sized horse. <laughs> I would outrun the duck size. Ducks, by their very nature, are not that fast. But I, when you when you shrink a horse down that small, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm, Im- I'm imagining like one of those rat terrier dogs. <laughs> right. You want it to be as small as possible. Yep. And then you're going to run. Would you sing to them? Uh, well, it's like the snake and the flute. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I would I would use all of my breathing capacity to run. <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs>